This broken PS5 was sent to Sony's repair center for repair, but they sent it back and said it was unfixable. But we'll be the judge of that, let's get it apart and see if we can fix it. This video is sponsored by iFixit, more on them in a minute. A viewer named Leo sent me his PS5 so I could make this video, so thank you to Leo. Okay, and I can see that somebody's uh, been into the disk drive. That makes sense because the person that sent it in said that their kid put a cookie into the disk drive. They said that the disk drive itself is now fixed, but the problem they're having now is that this cable has been torn from the board. Apparently this is what Sony couldn't fix. That's no problem though. I'll give you guys a little training lesson, Sony. For this repair, I'm gonna be using iFixit's ProTech Toolkit. This toolkit is one of my favorites because it's got all the basic things you need to open up almost any device. We've got pry tools over here, a suction cup right here, anti-static wrist strap, and then tweezers and pry tools right here, along with this pick set right here. These are especially useful for things like phone screen repairs. And then over here we have my favorite part of the kit. This is the bit and driver set. This has all the common bits that you need for most fasteners, along with a lot of specialty ones, like we've got game bits over here, we've got a SIM card tray removal tool, and then of course we've got the security Torx right up here, along with several other specialty bits, and then a nut driver set. I love the design of this whole set, but the functionality of the driver set is probably my favorite. You can just remove it from the entire kit, because there's a magnetic back here and a magnetic back here. Once we have it removed, we can use the top cover as a screw tray holder, or we can just set it underneath to get it out of the way. You can buy this ProTech toolkit right on iFixit's website, or I'll also leave an Amazon link in the description. iFixit also has lots of repair guides on their website, along with parts and tools for most devices. In order to prevent this type of connector from ripping off of the board, we need to pull on this white piece that plugs into this off-white piece. This off-white piece is attached to the motherboard. This white piece is not. So we wanna pull on this edge and this edge of just the white piece, making sure that the pliers don't slip and damage these wires. So I will put my pliers right there, making sure that they're not pulling on the off-white piece. And then we just pull straight up like that. And then same with this connector over here. If it's tight, we can wiggle back and forth as we pull up. And then we can remove this black mid-frame piece. Now that we have that removed, we can see the damage on the disk drive board. So this off-white piece right here should be still connected to the board. Clearly it's not, so let's remove it. There we go. And these little brown patches right here are the copper pads that were attached to the board. And these copper pads are where the current flows from the various parts of the board that need to give the disk drive power. So in order to repair this, we need to remove these brown pads right here. And then we need to scrape off sections of the green solder mask that cover the copper traces. That will enable us to solder these little silver pins onto the parts of these traces that we scraped off. And then we'll solder it all down. We'll also need to build some sort of mounting pins over here to mount the connector to, so it's not just loosely flopping around on the board. I could probably solder this on correctly without removing the disk drive, but I'm actually gonna remove the disk drive and disassemble it so I can get to just this board right here. That will just enable me to be able to access all the little places that I need to on the board just to make sure I get this soldered on as solidly as we can. So we just need to disconnect it from here and then the disk drive just lifts right off. I also wanna make sure that the disk drive is working correctly because there's no point in doing all this work to fix this connector if the disk drive itself is broken. Ah, I see some cookie remnants right here. Let's remove this board first. Now I'm gonna just remove this bottom metal plate from the disk drive. With the metal plate removed, we can see the inside of the drive and just make sure everything's working correctly. Everything looks good on the metal plate itself. Don't see any problems there. And other than a few crumbs on this roller, I don't see any problems inside the drive either. So we'll just give this roller a bit of a cleaning. Might as well clean this one while we're here. Okay, now we're gonna put this back together and get to the hard part. So the normal position of this connector is right about there. But since we need to make sure that we have a good mounting plane for each of these mounting pins over here, and then also in order to be able to connect these four pins to the circuits on the board, what I'm gonna do is just move this connector back 
right about there or so, right against this capacitor back here. And then that will make it so we can solder these pins right down to what's left of these traces on the board. And then we can use this part of the board to mount the connector to using the side mounting pins. Although that could be a problem here because there is that little via, so I may need to solder this on a little bit crooked in order to avoid that. So I'm gonna get this all prepped and then we'll do the soldering work. Before I go to solder on the connector, I will remove these brown pads that were torn up from the board and that will enable me to solder this connector right down onto these fresh new pads on the board. So now with the solder mask removed, the solder will stick to it. We're gonna put some flux on these pads first. Flux just helps the solder flow. Then after the flux is on, I'll come through with my soldering iron and add some solder to each of these pins. That'll make it so when I go to solder on the connector, the solder from the connector will stick onto the solder that's attached to this board. And now with this connector soldered on, let's get under a microscope and just check all our joints and make sure it all looks good. So this first mounting pin over here, that's mounted on there really nicely. Got a really good connection of solder right there. So that's gonna be really strong. This first pin right here looks great. Second pin also looks great. Third pin looks great. Fourth pin also looks great. So all these pins are soldered on very well. These aren't gonna go anywhere. This mounting pin over here doesn't have as quite as much of a solder connection to the board, but there's really not much else I could do here because there just wasn't very much material here on the board for me to solder to. So this is about as good as we're gonna get. And the best news is that the connector is soldered on very solidly. So now we need to put the disk drive back together, then we can install the drive back in the console and start the console up and see if the disk drive actually works. And now with the PS5 all back together, let's see if it'll turn on. Good so far. Do we have eject? Eject button works. Let's see if it's gonna come up on the screen and if it does, we'll try out a disc. Okay, everything is looking good so far. I'm gonna try putting a disc in and let's see if the disc drive works. Doesn't sound the best, that's for sure. Okay, but it is reading. Okay, there we go. So the disc drive is working great. It doesn't sound the best, but it is fully working. So we know the disc drive fully works, but it's got that buzzing noise and I think I know why. So I've got the cover off so we can access the disc drive. The first thing that can cause that type of problem is this sticker right here. So this is a fairly rigid sticker. And when you put your screwdriver down here to turn this manual eject screw, this sticker actually can point in and stay there and just kind of stay deformed. And it will actually, the sticker will actually contact these little parts of this plastic. It's kind of like a plastic screw down here. This plastic screw turns very fast. And when this plastic piece contacts it and it's turning very fast, it can make a buzzing noise. So the easy fix for this is just to remove this plastic piece, just like that. And now you can see the screw a little bit better. And this little tab right here is what was rubbing against it. And that's part of the reason for the noise. Let's start it up and see how much noise is still there. I don't think that got rid of all of the noise, but let's check. Definitely a lot of noise there still. So since we still got a lot of noise there, we got to take the disk drive the rest of the way apart. So we'll get it apart and have a look at those little gears. So right over here is the gear train of this disk drive. So let's remove the laser assembly out of it. And then we can see just the motor and the gear train right here. So on the top side is the manual eject screw. And that should operate this whole gear train when we turn it. So if I put my screwdriver in here, it does not turn either way. It's just totally bound up in there. But at the same time, I don't see any problems with any of these gears. So there's either something going on with one of the gears or we could actually just have a bad motor as well. I think the next step is going to be removing this whole gear train and then we can check the motor and the gear train and see what exactly is causing this to bind up. We've already gotten that screw out down there. So now we need to remove this one. 
And there's one more screw right under there. So we need to remove this plastic piece first. And I've actually never done that before on these things. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now we can get that screw off. Also, we can see a worm gear down here. So this worm gear right here is what drives this entire gear train. That screw out and we should be able to get this whole gear train out now. Okay, and there we go. So first things first, I don't see any problem with any of these gears. There's nothing stripped. I don't see anything binding here. So I don't think the problem is in the gear train. I think maybe it's either with this worm gear or possibly even the motor itself. So one way to figure out what exactly is causing this problem is to just start removing gears. And then once we get all the gears removed, we can see if the motor is still having that issue. Oh, I did get it to turn. Oh, I had it turning and then it just stopped. I think we have a motor problem here because I can some, there we go. It's turning now, but it won't turn the other way and then it's locked up again. It doesn't look like the worm gear itself is damaged or anything like that. So I think the noise we're hearing is these gears kind of skipping and causing that noise, just like that. So if we look at a known good drive, which I happen to have right here, we can put our screwdriver in and you see how easily that turns and also how quietly. So I think the obvious answer here is to remove the motor from this disk drive and put it into the broken one. So here is the manual eject and we can turn it very easily both ways. And here it is from the other side. Everything turns nice and freely. Now I wanna get the laser back in and test it again. I just wanna kinda of test it at every step along the way just to make sure that it's gonna work once we get it all put back together. So now we can install the bottom plate and let's test it one more time with the bottom plate on. Okay, and that is all turning freely. Now I'm just gonna get the rest of this disc drive put back together and then we'll test it once more before we get it put into the PS5. And now let's test it one more time. I just wanna make sure it turns freely and doesn't make a ton of noise. Oh yeah, that's, that's working great, feels great. Now I just need to get this disc drive put back into the PS5 and then we can test it again. So we have our PS5 all back together. We've got it started up. Let's see if it plays a disc and if it's nice and quiet how it should be. And here we go. It's nice and quiet, but does it read the disc? Okay, it shows that there's a disc in it. It's reading it and it is still nice and quiet. Okay, and there we go. Let's eject it and just make sure that it's gonna stay nice and quiet when we eject it. There we go, that's what it's supposed to sound like. So this PS5 is fixed, and Sony, just give me a call if you want me to do some training for you. If you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I tried to fix a PS5 that two other shops couldn't fix. I'll put that link up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix it. Thank you again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching it, and I hope you have a good one.